till now we have looked into we have seen uh, different programming constructs using which we can implement repetition that means a set of statements will be repeated in a loop and uh, in C such constructs were um, while do while do while and for loop right. Now also we have seen how we can branch out coming through a sequential one after another execution of the instructions depending on a condition we can go out to one path or another path through if else structures and we have also seen some examples by in which a combination of the if else structure as well as uh, the while do st structure are combined together to give us more powerful and useful programs. Today we will start discussing about a new form of representation of data that is very useful and very fundamental that is called arrays. Okay. Arrays the word arrays simply means arrangement, arrangement of data. Okay. So, we can think of um, for example, uh, an array of soldiers or array of people standing in a line. So, people are standing in a line, this is an array. Okay. We can also have two rows of people standing. All right. This is a very regular structure. We can have three rows also. So, these are arrays of people. Now, if I just have only one row in that case, say for example, I consider one row, then it is a one dimensional array. When I consider rows as well as columns, then it is a two dimensional array. However, we will now initially concentrate on one dimensional array like this. Okay. What is this? This is an array of people. Similarly, we can have array of numbers for example, 1, 7, 0, 5, 3 that is again an arrangement of data, okay, arrangement of data in a linear fashion. Okay. This is the first element and this is the last element of this arrangement. So, this is also an array, array of some numbers. Okay. So, in an abstract way we can say that an array can be drawn in this form, it can be an array of integer or an array of real numbers depending on what I want to store here. Suppose this be an array of integers. Then each of these places can have one integer stored in this 2, 6, 5, 3, maybe again 2 and 9. So, this is an array. Now, how many elements are there in the array? Each of these are elements of the array. How many elements are there in the array? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, this is the size of the array. Okay. And these are the elements of the array, this, this, all these are elements of the array. Also, another thing we need to know is how do I uh, identify one element of the array? Say this element 6 of the array, this array. How do I identify that? What is its um, uh, identification? The identification is the position. So, this is the second position, all right. This is the first position, 
this is the third position, fourth position, so on and so forth. Now, this positions in the array is known as index. Okay. Index is the position in the array. Index determines position in the array. Position of what? Position of an element in the array. Okay. So, for the time being, we assume that arrays are linear structures, linear uh, arrangement of data. Now, one point to remember is one array can store data of the same type. For example, it is not possible to um, have an array in which there will be some integers, some real numbers okay, or and some again characters. Okay. So, that is not possible, that is not allowed. So, an array will is allowed to store data of only one type. We know that int, float, cat, all these are defining different types of data or data type, right or data type. So, an array can store data of only one data type whatever that is. It can be all floating point numbers, it can be all characters, it can be all integers whatever. All right. So, these are two words of caution. So, what have we learnt? We have learnt that array is an arrangement of data of the same type and the array has a is identified as a whole by a name and say for example, this array this is not a valid array. So, let us have a valid array um, let us have a valid array of 4 elements say of real numbers maybe. Right. So, this array will have a name let us say arbitrarily we put a name A that means A is the name to this array and this array has got a type. What is the type of this array? The type is float. So, array A is a float. So, A is a is an array of type float that means, it can store only floating point data. Also an array consists of different elements each of these are elements and each element each element can be a floating point number and the particular element is identified by the index of an array. All right. Now, and also we have we know that an array has got a size. Given this, let us think of why are we talking about all these things? Why is this needed after all? We have encountered till now. Uh, quite a few example problems. For example, let us again come back to the um, old problem of finding the maximum of a set of integers. Now, in that case what did you do? We read one integer, we um, initialized a variable say first integer we read uh, let me one second do it. So, if you recall we I am writing the flow chart 
I am not writing the C program, read a number, you know how to read a number by scanf, then put that number to be max, read again read number okay. and if number is greater than max then I am writing pseudocode. So, I can write then, then max is getting the number again I read number and in that way I go on or you can say that okay, why should I write in this way. I shall simply implement a loop uh, while loop or for loop. So, that this thing is uh, carried on till I stop say for n numbers or for uh, so here I can use for i assigned 1 to i less than equal to n i plus plus to implement the loop here here but that is possible when I know the total number of numbers okay if I didn't know the number of numbers there are some other ways of doing it say for example, I am reading integers and I say uh, when I want to stop I will enter a 0. So, here I could have put in something like this while num is greater than 0 do. So, we do this as long as num is greater than 0 I am going on doing this and if num is 0 or num that we decide or some negative number I know that my job is done. So, but in this case if I want to remember what were the numbers already given to me. Suppose the numbers that were given were 5 initially here then 2. So, nothing was done max was 5 then 7 then here there has been a ch interchange. So, now here max becomes 7 then again it was 3. So, nothing was done then it was 8 and max became 8. So, that will work for this sort of program, but if I want to know uh, what were the numbers you are saying max is 8, but what were the numbers that were uh, input by the user we have not remembered them anywhere is not it we have not remembered them anywhere. So, here in my program I will not be able to say what was the second number entered, what was the first number entered, was there any 0 entered or was there any um, anything greater than 3 entered. We cannot answer these questions because we read this and we operated on this and we forgot them. Now, if you can think of that if I had used an array this sort of thing and I had as the user gave the numbers I stored them here 5 then 3 user gave 3 I stored 3 here then user gave uh, 7 I stored 7 here then the user gave uh, something may be again uh, 4 I stored 4 here and then the user gave 9 I stored 9 here. Then even after or 8 here I even after reporting the max that this is the max I have got these in my array say my name of that is still a which is a is an array of integers then this is stored here I have remembered them in the array. So, I can now say what was my first element I go to the first 
element of the array using the index value okay and second i go to the this value okay what is the fourth value first second third fourth i come to this point and i can say okay the fourth value was this so all these things i can remember because i have been able to store them in the form of an array okay so that is so array is again an arrangement in the memory all right so an array when i you know that every variable is stored in a memory location right so when we had num and the the program that i had written um, that num initially i sorry i initially i read num and then i do this and then again read num if num is greater than max max assign num when i do this thing in a loop or whatever what is happening whenever i have got variable num is a variable one location in the memory this is num and max is another variable i have declared all of them here int num int max i have declared them so here there is another location which is known as max so when i did this read num and suppose some data 5 was read that 5 is stored here all right 5 is stored here when i come here uh, and i put max num assigned to max so it comes here now i did num again so suppose num is 4 and no update in max next time i did it 7 so this is updated here and this becomes 7 so this is the process that goes on all right now may so every time i am losing uh, the old value of num and storing the current value of num and similarly whenever there is an update required i take the current value the, the max up to now okay so i am having two variables of integers but if i had done it in the form of an array then i could have thought of like this that i have got suppose the array size is 5 suppose the array size is 5 so that means conceptually i am talking of something like this that there are five positions in this array okay and as i am getting the data it's coming over here 5 3 7 2 9 9 whatever now actually internally what's happening internally this is being stored in the memory the array size is 5 here so i have got five locations in my memory four five so these five locations of the memory are being given to the array a suppose the name of the array is array a so for 
the array A. So, the first element is coming here when I am actually writing it here, it is coming here, second element is coming here, next element is coming here, next here, next here. So, these are the memory locations. So, an array is actually uh, a representation in the memory which are contiguous and you know each memory location has got an address. So, suppose hypothetically the address of this is 1000 and each of them are integers and integer if I say integer is requiring 2 bytes okay. then if this is 1000 location the next one will be 1002, next one will be 1004, then 1006, then 1008, 1008 to 1009 right. So, 1000 to 1001 is for the first element this one coming here, 1002 to 1003 for this element, 1004 to 1005 is this element, 6 to 7 is this element, 1008 to 1009 will be this element. So, 1000 to 1009 that means 10 locations we are requiring for these 5 elements of the array. Now, since also in my program I have got 2 other variables one is the num or one is the max all right I can manage it with one more variable. Max is a separate variable suppose so that is here this variable is max let me delete this variable this is not required right so, because uh, this diagram is redundant because max is another variable which I have here. We will write a program we will show uh, later how we can write a program to deal with this. So, everything so since I have computed I have read the numbers I have stored them in the memory locations and since I am going through an array, I have not written overwritten one number by another. Therefore, I can remember all the numbers. So, this is one uh, basic reason of usage of array where I want to remember the numbers in the memory. Given this, let us quickly recapitulate what we have said till now. So, Many applications require multiple data items that have a common characteristics. What is that common characteristics? Common characteristics like whether they are integer or float or character whatever that is. It can be even more complex. So, we call uh, say so that numbers that we are showing uh, say we can in mathematics we often represent them as x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 say up to x n and that whole thing I can represent as an array x where x 1 is the first element, x 2 is the second element, x 3 is the second third element like that. Now, here is an example finding the minimum set of numbers uh, minimum of a set of numbers okay how we can find a minimum of a set of numbers so so this is what i have already discussed but just for the sake of revision let's look at it once again say for three numbers you know we can this program must be uh, familiar to you now you should be able to understand it quickly if a is less than b and a is less than equal to c then a is the minimum i was showing the maximum here it's an example of the minimum okay else if b is less than c then b is the minimum else c is the minimum so far so fine as soon as i extend from three numbers to four numbers you see the program becomes a little bigger if a is less than equal to b and a is less than equal to c and a is less than equal to d then minimum is a otherwise if for you see if everywhere I have 
brought in more number of comparisons and the program code has also been bigger bigger all right and i am not storing the numbers as yet i am not storing the numbers that's one issue the problem is so from 3 to 4 we need needed so much uh, extension now suppose we have got 10 numbers to handle that will be even bigger 20 numbers even bigger 100 numbers so how do we do that the solution is the solution to the problem is what is the solution the solution to the problem is use of arrays right using arrays right now as i said that all the data items constituting the group shared the same name all these data items that i had shown say um, integers like 5 7 6 3 2 all these can share the same name x or maybe let me give a uh, meaningful name num now this one is num 1 this one is num 2 this one is num 5 okay so i have got just as we had shown x1 x2 up to xn so here n is 5 so i have got this 5 okay individual elements are accessed by specifying the index this is the index which is telling me in which position which number in this array of numbers i am looking at okay we we'll look at this further uh, the use of arrays and many more things are to come 